Hello and welcome to 251, Two Pianists, Five Minutes, One Subject. Today we're going to be talking about Mal Powell, the pianist. I'm Simon Whiteside. My name's Nick Tomlin. So who was Mal Powell? Well, he was born Melvin Epstein on the 12th of February 1923 in New York. Um, He began classical lessons aged four, um, but after seeing Teddy Wilson play, he kind of caught the jazz bug and switched to jazz. And actually by age 14, he was playing professional gigs as a jazz player around New York City. Handing over to you, Simon. Yeah, he had quite an illustrious career. In fact, he played with some really top players, including Benny Goodman, for quite some time, actually. But his career was varied and um, he developed muscular dystrophy at some point and that made it very difficult for him to tour. Although he was still able to play the piano, it was more it affected his lower limbs to start with. He had to walk with a stick, etc. But his early career uh, from 1939, he was working with Bobby Hackett and uh, George Brunies and Zutty Singleton. Uh, and also he was writing arrangements for people like Earl Hines. And that's what, in fact, that's when he changed in around 41. He changed his name from Epstein to Powell. He spent quite a lot of time on the West Coast as well. And there's some really good albums from that period. And I've certainly seen a photograph of him overlooking, um, I think, the Macambo Club from his house uh, in, in Hollywood. Uh, but it was later on that he became interested again in classical music and he started to develop as a composer and he ended up going to Yale University and graduating from there and he studied with Paul Hindemith Uh, and interestingly enough later on he became an academic and in fact he replaced Hindemith as the chair of composition at, at Yale later on. Probably his most significant educational role however was to set up what's normally called Cal Arts these days, which is the sort of arts equivalent of Caltech, which is the um, sort of like the MIT of the West Coast, if you like. Uh, And he was he was fundamentally the one of the big uh, drivers of that establishment, particularly obviously the composition side of it. Um, Do you have anything to add to that, Nick? Uh, No, I mean, he's Work as, as a classical composer is very interesting, and he kind of moved through, started off in composing in a more kind of neoclassical style, but then actually went on to experiment with atonality and serialism and, and even composed some electronic music in the 1960s. He still occasionally performed as a jazz player and even uh, went back to work with Goodman again in, in the 1950s. And in the 80s, he took part in a jazz cruise playing alongside Betty Carter, Milt Hinton and Louis Belson. And people like that. Yeah, I mean, the the big surprise to him, um, not necessarily to other people, was that he did in fact win a Pulitzer Prize for composition, didn't he, with his double piano concerto called Duplicates. Yeah, that was 1990 he won the Pulitzer. Which was quite late in his life because he in fact did die in 1998, so he, he had a relatively short life. Let's talk very briefly about his style then. Fundamentally, for me, what's interesting about him is he's a, he's a sort of transitional player. He, As you said, he really liked Teddy Wilson. He, he never really got rid of the swing, not as much as Thelonious Monk got rid of swing from his playing, if you like. Um, he's always got that filigree, rapid-fire, right-hand stuff going on. Mm-hmm. But later on, he played with some West Coast players like Paul Quinichet. Um, and it, he did move more into the modern idiom. Do you have anything to add to that? No, I mean, he's, he's a very interesting figure and really worth examining, you know, checking out some of his recordings, uh, I think, because um, he's one that really kind of slips under the radar. Um, but he's, he's a really interesting player and, and really interesting musician, I think. Well, I got, um, if you look, look up to your left, Nick, you will see the album, uh, the Mel Powell album of three uh, Shalak records that I got from America. That was his first recording, I think, 1948. Mm-hmm. He's very much a swing pianist on those. By the end of his career as a jazz player, he has developed into a more modern-sounding player. Mm. Well, that wraps up our conversation about Mel Powell. I'm Simon Whiteside. And my name's Nick Tomlin.